Hi, everybody. Welcome to our presentation, Hearing Others, Discovering Oneself, Enhancing Sociocultural and Intercultural Competencies in the Classroom. In the context of this symposium, this is who we are in case anyone wants to follow up with us by email and Twitter. In our presentation today, we will report on the, the inception of the unit that is called INTS 2001, Language in Use. This is a new multilingual unit in the BA program within the language majors at Macquarie University. The unit start uh, to offer from last year in 2020. This year marks the second offering of the unit. And here's the outline of our talk today. I will begin with the ideas and concept behind our unit design and planning, including the framework. And then Susanna, my colleague, will talk about the implementation and the practical side of the unit, including the feedback and reflection. So this unit was designed for the second year students at intermediate level. In the European framework, this corresponds to the levels B1 and B2. It is a compulsory unit within the major of the individual languages. Let me first introduce you to our program under the Department of McCall, which stands for Media, Communication, Creative Arts, Language, and Literature. We offer nine language majors. To say in alphabetical order, they are Chinese, Croatian, French, German, Greek, Italian, Japanese, Russian, and Spanish. The initiative of having this multilingual unit um, necessitated through the, the requirements of the new curriculum structure of our BA program at Macquarie. It was first driven by the pragmatic request to increase student numbers across the language majors. To provide a little bit more context, some of the language units that we offer here, particularly in the European languages, apart from Spanish and French, need to be combined to boost up the sustainable enrollment numbers. This is probably a challenging issue shared across the educational sector where the number of language learners of some minor languages are getting smaller and smaller every year. This concerning background, however, led to a fantastic opportunity for us to be creative about language learning. And here came the great collaboration across the European and Asian language specialists, starting from me and my colleague, Susanna, as a co-unit convener. We collaboratively decide and facilitated the unit in a way that it can inclusively embrace every language learner, regardless of their linguistic backgrounds. There were a lot of challenges, of course, along the way, but we both started to enjoy the journey once we could see more clearly the purpose and the direction where this unit leads us to. We optimize the existing resources, whether it be the research capacity of our specialization in the different areas of linguistics or our staff members who are themselves multilingual. Looking back, I was quite, it was quite a rare experience that the two of us who teach totally different languages which are Japanese, I teach Japanese and she teaches uh, German, 
uh, both of us could get a chance to work together in the same unit. The multilingual asset that we hold dearly in our discipline started to nicely hold together from the beginning and continue to expand further as you will let us see at the end of our presentation. Our principle when we design a unit is to go broaden rather than deepen. In other words, we want the students to focus on the big picture, how language functions as a social tool and is used to negotiate complex system of interactions in our everyday life. In the unit design, we follow the non-essentialist approach of intercultural competence in language learning by demonstrating a wide range of sociocultural variation and context such as gender, social class, age, changing of technology, all that can constitute identity and influence the language use of an individual beyond the ethnic or national culture. We consider that it's important to create awareness of such issue to broaden learners horizons and to avoid negative stereotypes and prejudice toward representatives of ethnic and national groups. As usually pointed out as the differentialist approach when dealing with intercultural competence. The ultimate aim of the unit is to break the mold to the old traditional fallacy that people are different because they speak different languages or because of their ethnic or um, national cultural background. It is true that careful consideration needs to be taken when communicating with people of another language. However, that social distinction or in a more technical term, cultural differentialism is not helpful in language learning as it creates a, my, a fixed mindset in cross-cultural or intercultural communication. In addition, many linguists and language education around the world would agree with me that, in fact, um, there are more similarities than differences in languages in the world. For example, many languages conceptualize anger as um, hot fluid inside a container, which is actually referred to a human body. As in an English metaphor, he was filled with anger. Why the concept is shared across the languages. The way that it is used to express anger might be different ac across languages. Like when people say, um, I'm happiness challenge instead of I'm angry. Some languages might indicate a different location in the container like body. Um, the, emotion, the, the emotion of anger might be situated in the head. If you speak Hungarian, it might be situated in a liver if you speak Malay. But if you speak Japanese, you might experience a wider range of container as anger in Japanese language can travel from the stomach via the chest and up to the head. On this slide, I'm showing you our unit description that we shared with the students. The focus is on the fundamentals of how language functions as a social tool and also the awareness of the importance of intercultural communicative competence within our daily lives. The learning outcomes of the unit also reflect what I have been discussing so far. It's the communicative competence in the target languages that needs to go hand in hand with the refined 
awareness of language and language use in a variety of intercultural contexts. Next, Susanna will give a presentation on the practical side of the unit, including the feedback and the reflection. Over to you, Susanna. Okay, yes, thank you. Thank you, Shavalin. This year, 131 students were enrolled in our unit, Language in Use. We have an 11 week structure, one hour lecture plus one hour tutorial. The lectures are taken by different colleagues, introducing a range of relevant areas of research aligned with our own research interests. Weekly tutorials are numbers permitting in the student's target language in Spanish, French, Japanese, Chinese. All other students of German, Croatian, Greek, Italian, and Russian come together in the multicultural tutorial, multilingual tutorial, where the classroom language is English and the students provide examples from their respective uh, language, target languages. This is a very stimulating experience and unique for all involved. So it's a very productive thing. The weekly lectures are to spark the student's interest in reflecting on as many aspects of language and language learning as possible. In the tutorials, they apply these theoretical approaches to their target language and explore specific examples. Weeks one to three are crucial to win over the students to engage with the content. We start in the together in the full size group with everybody present. And miraculously, this was possible lockdown free early this year. Starting point in week one is the assumption that many languages are present among us in number far beyond those we teach and that the students are in and far beyond the number of languages that the students are enrolled in and that they study formally with us at Macquarie. Which languages do we bring to this unit? How proficient are we in them? Does that matter? What makes them easy, hard, appropriate, useful, not so useful to use and practice? In week one, we were in the interactive learning space on campus and we deliberately create a battle of voices. There is a wow effect. The realization that many in our group are multilingual and aware of customs in more than one culture. We play to the diversity of the group and the instructors right from the beginning are co-learners. Everyone's sense of curiosity is appealed to in week one and the prepared and a preparedness to think along the thematic lines set out by the unit schedule is created, designed in a manner that everyone can contribute and already has experience to do so. We first explore language as sound with an introduction to phonetics and characteristics of specific languages, consonants, vowels, tone, pitch, stress, clicks, <laughs> and fundamentals on script, writing systems, and the role of diacritics. From there, we move to language learning, so approaches to grammar and language acquisition, the role of context and communicative approaches, memory, motivation, and learning strategies, all this is very close to the student's experience. In the following week, two weeks, language variation over geographical space and time, dialects and accents are the focus. And this ties in with the questions around language and identity, but also language and politics, which is a hot topic and students enjoy. In week seven, basic concepts of social linguistics are introduced, language in interaction, gender, class, subcultures, register, formal and informal use, the role of politeness. The lectures spark a wealth of ideas, observations, questions and comments, and the students bring these to the tutorials where conversations, and we all agree on this, where con con conversations are never slow or dreary. The focus in week eight is on language and emotions. Conceptual metaphor theory is explored and how in, um, intensity of emotion is expressed in the various languages and cultural contexts. 
Is all this comparable across different languages? How are love and anger communicated? Can they be, can they be communicated? The students love this. In the last three weeks, one focus is on language and te technology, learning tools, translation programs, and aids for the learner. Next, we focus on an unexpected aspect, communication without sound, the role of nonverbal language and cultural specific gestures. This is fun and so important to explore. And lastly, we round off the semester with a session that plays to striving for greater proficiency in one's la language learning and endeavors, namely the creativity in the target language, rhymes, poems, puns, onomatopoeia. And we are back to sound and sight, but also to nuance and to setting goals for one's next level of language acquisition. The unit is different. Students learn new facts about their target language. Aspects are discussed that are never or only rarely spoken about in traditional language class. With this unit, we are definitely outside the realm of language textbook. And from the tutor's perspective, students seem to be enthusiastic to share their experience and what they know. So thank you to the colleagues who have provided us with this feedback. This is how the tutor saw it. And the students, they have rated the unit as follows. Ah, okay, hang on. The key to the success of the unit was to create this initial curiosity. But the students themselves then had to turn and did turn this curiosity into discoveries for themselves as they reflected critically, gained awareness and essential theoretical knowledge. They stayed on topic, they zoomed out and took a bird's eye view of their target language and language in general, and they reflected on all of this from a different and an unaccustomed vantage point. That's how the tutors saw them. But the students themselves, they rated the things as follows. They liked the authentic examples. They liked the alternative perspective. They felt enriched. They felt they were keeping their language alive, although much was spoken in English. They had fun. They, it changed, the unit changed the way they think. They learned to express themselves. They developed a notion of politeness and awareness and stayed interconnected, uh, created this interconnection between their native language and their target language. And they saw that they, we were aiming to help them develop and shape their multilingual identity. So we can say with confidence that in this last iteration, our students found their voice to speak about language. One of the colleagues teaching in the multilingual tutorial reflected as follows. She said, our purpose as language educators is to train students to become not only proficient in language users, but also to become skillful mediators between two or more languages and cultures. Our unit INTS 2001 Language in Use played to the goal of training up students to become these, quote, skillful mediators between two or more languages and cultures. People who go from from the classroom out into the community with enhanced awareness and ready to build bridges. The buzz felt by all of us involved in this unit two years in a row came about because collectively we brought a wealth of experience and our, and our multilingual repertoire to the group and into the classroom. We heard and we listened to others and we discovered more about ourselves. And this just gives you, thank you to the team and just gives you an idea of our multilingual repertoire. Next up today, our colleagues from among our team, Jasna Milic and Patricia Koromvakis will report on how they have taken and continue to take initiatives one step further as they purposefully go out as these skilled mediators into the language communities around us here at Sydney. 
equipped with language, cultural competence, and their rich multilingual repertoire. So we would like to now hand over to them. Thank you very much, 